And the calling for this body is multiple things, but it, it boils down to unity in the body of Christ, doing what we can through prayer and relationships to bring revival, to bring a move of God to our county. Um, he's shown us some things to do, like the house of prayer in 85. I saw that. Never, you know, what we know about Kansas City hadn't existed then. So the last few years, we've started that because it was part of the vision. Uh, in the last three or four years, he's, he spoke to us about starting a school of ministry, and, and we're going to be doing that in, in, in relationship with uh, the Vineyard Church where Drew goes. Good to have you, Drew. Um, and so uh, the Lord's been calling me to some different things, and and one of the areas in our church, and we've talked about the fivefold ministry, and I'm not going to do a teaching on that, but is that God has gifted people. And there are some who are just, uh, you know, are called to be pastors. And I, I've pastored this church, but in all honesty, in my opinion, not done really great at that because there's, there's things that I'm just not good at. I'm, my, my Nathan's a warm, fuzzy, relationship kind of guy. You know, he has that. And I just want to share with you, a, a pastor is called to shepherd the people. According to Ezekiel, that means feeding them, protecting them, healing the broken, restoring, going after those who have taken off. It's building relationships. It's how to do life. And we've been praying about that. We, uh, we've actually sought different churches and, and looking at folks to maybe fulfill that particular capacity. A couple months ago, uh, Richard was up here speaking, and I just watched him. And there's this reality that came to my heart that he's already, he's already pastoring people. And he's way better at it than I am. I don't say that being pious or, you know, super humble. It's just reality. And so I, I prayed about it, and I shared it with one person who I, I, I asked them to pray, and I trust them a lot. And so then I, I, I went to him, and he tried to dodge the bullet. <laughs> and if you know him, he thinks everything out in so much detail and figures it and plays with it. And, you know, I'm ready to jump off the cliff tomorrow. Let's go. Let's, you know. And, and we need that balance, you know. We need people. Um, and so I said, I just want you to pray about that. And he kept saying, are you sure? Are you sure? And I said, I am. I was wondering if you're sure. And uh, he gave me an answer finally, after a good while, that yes. And, and, it, and I loved his response. He said, I can't, I can't find, as hard as I try, I can't find a good reason not to. You know? <laughs> and one of the things about the calling on my life is I love to watch people do what they're called to. I'd rather, I love watching Angie get up here and minister. I love watching these guys worship. I, I love that. It just, and, and so I, I went to our elders um, and I, I just said, here's, I really feel like he's called and we've been praying about that. And uh, I still believe that there's, there's other others coming and, uh, and, but I really believe that this is the time and ask them and um, you know one thing Richard said I'm not doing it unless it's totally unanimous among the leaders and, and that it was it was kind of a no-brainer I think everybody kind of already knew it and, and the question even my mom says are you retiring are you moving to Texas are you moving to California with your grandkids and uh, there's days my wife would like to do that probably but but, but I'm married to the land in Crawford County. I, you know, I don't know how to tell that any different. But, but what it means is it, it, I'm going to keep doing some of the stuff I've been doing. It's not like I'm leaving. I'll still preach some like we have over the last several months. Uh, I'm going to be spending a lot of time working on bringing the school of ministry to, to four C's, working at spending more time with pastors in the county, you can still call me Pastor Ray. That's that's great. You know, that's just it feels funny for some if you don't do that. Uh, I, I'm gonna title myself Senior Leader 
as far as just oversight for what God's doing. But, but I'm excited about that. So I'm going to ask Richard if you would come up. I'm going to ask you to sit in that chair. I'm... <laughs> You're not... Hold on, don't get too far back. Peggy, I want you to come up too. I just feel like you're supposed to stand behind him. If you've ever been in a pastoral uh, office of any kind, sometimes it's a bigger strain on the wife than it is the husband or the, or the other spouse, because I know we've got some lady pastors. And so I, I just I want us to pray. Now I'm going to ask the elders if you would come up. And what we're going to do is we're going to pray over them. The, literally, a, a, an ordaining or setting in, it's, it's, it's the old idea of the priest of being set apart for a, for a purpose, a specific purpose. And, you know, Richard is wonderful. He's a great counselor. He's, he's a great teacher. He's just a great guy. And, uh, and we're just going to pray over him. I'm going to hand the mic around to de- our, our guys here. And then after we get done, when we normally do our break, I want you to come up and congratulate, hug, say, do you really know what you're getting yourself into? You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> but anyway, and as, as our elders are praying, would you just stretch your hand toward them and just, just agree with them? And I, and I ask you, in a little bit, I'm going to ask some responses from you all. Uh, as a, a congregation, a commitment. He's making an incredible commitment to you, but I'm going to ask you to make a commitment to them, all right? And if you just pass it to them. Father, we welcome Richard and Peg into our family. Father, I, I have many times thanked you that you have brought them in. Lord, we as a congregation commit to support them, to love them, to walk by their side and be there when they need our help. Lord, we, we commit to lift them up in prayer every day, Lord, and to be there with them in Jesus' name. Our Father, I just thank you, Lord, for Richard and Peggy. I thank you, Lord, for the gift that they've been to this church, Father, and to the body of Christ and to your kingdom, Father. And I thank you for Richard. I thank you, Lord, that he was willing to step up. And I know there's so many perks. And I probably could give him a list that go along with it. But there are tremendous, tremendous things that he'll be blessed with. But I also thank you, Lord, that you give him wisdom and give him understanding and knowledge and how to handle every situation, Father God. Because I know that he spends time with you and he seeks your face. And when he prays, Father God, it's just not about his list of needs or the needs of the body. It'll be a quiet time where he listens to what you want him to do, Father. And we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to guide him in all things. And just bless him and his wife in Jesus' name. Richard and Peggy, all I see is um, it's a great joy that you're going to bring to the body, and we hope that you have joy in ministering to us as well. So we want to bless you, bless your ministry with great wisdom and understanding and guidance in Jesus' name. Now, Richard's already said yes, so those who are four C's members... Do you receive Richard as your pastor? If so, say, we do. We do. Now, would you stretch your hand toward him again? And would you just pray with, just repeat this. Say, Lord, we pray for wisdom. Lord, for direction. For protection. For our pastor. And we ask you, God, to strengthen he and his wife Peggy may they serve you many years and may we be a joy to them and we thank you for them Lord in Jesus name and everybody said 
Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand and them a hand. Would y'all give Mr. Ben a hand? Bring musicians with me so I sound better. Um, before I say anything else, um, I just want to, I guess, say something that is on my heart. That um, uh, I've, I grew up here in this church for about 13 years. Um, came here in 2000, and um, oh, I, I, it's good to be back home. Some, you know, it's good to have a, a good to have a home body to come back to and and just. Uh, remember God's faithfulness and, and where he's brought me and the relationships that um, I know most of everyone here in the room. And um, I just want to say thank you um, for, for everything. Um, and specifically, um, there's few people that have um, shaped my life as, um, as a man and growing up. And, um, and I just, uh, it's, it's so awesome to be here. And, and I, I don't, it's a God thing that I am here um, for, for the transition of Ray and uh, Richard coming on board. I, I love Richard. He's a, the short time that I've gotten to know him, he's, he's feisty and he, uh, he loves Jesus. And uh, I just love his tender heart and, and, and his, uh, his desire to speak truth into people's lives and to bring, and to bring God and just to break through. And, and, to, uh, and to just shepherd people like a, like a pastor's supposed to. So I'm excited to be here to be able to see you come up and uh, be able to walk in the calling that God's got for you. Um, I'm also thankful to be here to recognize the passing of the baton of someone that I, that I consider someone that shaped my life. And um, I love you, man. so many times that I was running and that I uh, I needed a good a good extra dad. My dad's great and he uh, he raised me right and he uh, but you were another one that I needed in my life and uh, someone that told me that I was uh, that was worth it that um, spoke into my life hmm. and I just thank you and I love you for what you did and, uh, and I'm excited for where God's moving you and uh, just want to thank you for your service and for your sacrifice and the time that you came here and, and what you did. And uh, thankful that you're not going anywhere. Thankful when you come down to Texas and I can hug on you down that way too. Um, I would like to uh, take some time to introduce my uh, fiance. Um, we've been engaged for three months now. Is that right? We're going to be getting married in March. That was one of the blessings that God blessed me with when I went down to Texas. So this is Sam. She's probably going to raise her hand, hopefully. <laughs> Acknowledge that she's with me. She's pretty awesome. She, we're hoping that God doesn't give her a whole lot of wisdom to move on and figure out what, what's wrong with her. Um, I want to also thank uh, everyone here. Uh, Sam and I got the opportunity through the church that we're now a part of to uh, go on a missions trip to Turkey, and, and some of you guys were a part of that, and uh, I think this church uh, was, a, it was a big influence in me being able to go and do that with Sam. Um, part of the vision of our body at Antioch is the fact that we, uh, we impact the community around us for Jesus as well as we, uh, we send people to plant churches because of uh, the Great Commission, and that's what we're, what we're called to do is to be able to go and to, and to spread the good news. And so we had an opportunity, Sam and I, uh, it was a, it was a cool conversation, a cool testimony. I was praying, um, and, and one of the goals that we had set for the, the beginning of the year together was the fact that we felt like we wanted to go on a missions trip together. And uh, she had never been on one. I've been on a couple with my parents when they went to Mexico, and a couple when I went to my discipleship school in Atlanta. And um, anyway, it was uh, it was a, it was a great trip. Uh, the the trip was um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the the um, I guess the construct of Turkey, but it's uh, 99.99999999% uh, Muslim, and there's actually uh, they're 
a saying there in Turkey that says to be Turkish is to be Muslim. So it's uh, it's very much ingrained in, in their culture. And um, and it was cool because God's opened up the door um, through some different things, through them wanting to be a part of the European Union and other things. It's it's a very, they're a very open community. And um, but we had to be kind of careful about when we went over there, how we, we had to be tactful in our way that we uh, talked and shared with uh, the walk of Christ that we were having and trying to, to talk to him. And uh, the cool thing was, is we saw some amazing things. Uh, I got stretched a lot. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have been on a missions trip, but some, but the missions trips that I had been a part of, it was, uh, we'd have an orphanage and we'd work there and we'd build a, a hut or something like that to be able to do something, uh, you know, tangible that we could leave. And uh, this trip was a little different in the fact that it was all about planting seeds. It was all about going because some of these people have never heard the name of Jesus before. And I would say, um, I, our missions pastor actually said that, um, that you're in a place where th- that uh, Christianity, I forget what the percentage, but like I said, it's, all, it's primarily Muslim. And so every, it was a lot of spiritual warfare. We went over there and uh, we met at this, uh, this uh, 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 international center where they have this church of people that just came on board and, uh, and they're starting to pray and starting to raise up people. Um, I think there in Antalya, I think there was 15 Christians in this whole city that were, uh, of, um, yeah, in the whole city. And, um, and so we just did a lot of uh, spiritual warfare where we were praying for people, developing relationships with some of the locals there. And um, I think we, we, we even got to see one person healed while we were there, which was really cool. And uh, it was different because God really challenged me in the fact that it is about planting the seed. You know, for, for some of us, we find success is in the, in the, I don't know, in, in, in seeing that person either come to Christ or for me, sometimes it was building an orphanage, something tangible. But it was really cool because God really ministered to my heart about the fact that he's, he's the good shepherd. He's the one who's going to bring that seed to pass. You know, that if I, if I was willing to plant it in faith and, and to be able to, it didn't matter whether I was the person or the uh, or the next guy that came along that got to reap the benefit that it's all for his kingdom, right? And um, and so I'm excited because we were the team that initially got to go in and to be able to lay some of the groundwork for what God is going to be doing in Turkey. And um, uh, we actually have a, a group, uh, a family that is gearing up to uh, to go over there full time. And so we kind of got to go in there, get the relationships, kind of scope it out for them, start planting some seed for them to be able to go in and to be able to hit it full speed. So I just wanted to thank you guys and kind of give a testimony on that um, and give a very short message. So bear with me. This is my first time uh, speaking in a little while. And so, uh, yeah, um, I'm going to pray for a minute. Uh, If you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. God, I thank you, Lord, for this church, God, and just for, um, Lord, just for your faithfulness, God, just who you are in our lives, Lord, that... um, Lord, I look back and I just see how far you've just brought the, this body, Father, that you, have, uh, that you haven't left us, Lord, that you are right next to us, Father, furthering the vision, Father, that this church foresees as a light on a hill, Lord, that, that shines in the, in the darkness of Crawford County, Lord, and we want to see you move here, God. We want to invite you, Holy Spirit, to come in and be a part of this service, Father, Lord, that it wouldn't be my words that are spoken, Father, but I pray that your Holy Spirit Lord, more than anything that I can say would just speak to our hearts right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we love you. Um, Give some of the testimony of kind of going along with the message that I'm going to be talking about. Um, I moved to Texas about a year and nine months ago, uh, January. I got my buddy Kurt married off, taken care of to Amanda. And then I figured it was time for me to get out because he left me in love. <laughs> um, I love you, Amanda. <laughs> Not bitter. Um, and I moved down to Texas. Uh, I, God gave me a great opportunity through the fact that my parents had just, my dad had accepted a job down in uh, Houston to be able to uh, work at a marathon refinery down there. And, uh, and the crazy thing was, is uh, a year before I even knew all this was kind of coming into motion, um, I would I'd gone to the house of prayer. I was doing the IHOP internship, and I'll never forget this prayer time. Um, I was sitting there, and 
and Ray had talked about the fact uh, that we pray a lot, but do you listen? Do you, do you actively listen to the word of God or, and listen for the voice of God in our lives? And so I sat there and I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen. And so I said, all right, 15 minutes. I think I, I, I said, I'm going to just not say a word for 15 minutes. God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open my journal and whatever you put out there, I'm just going to listen. I'm going to write it down. And, um, and so I started writing some stuff down that I felt like the Holy Spirit was telling me. And, and the very last line was, go to Texas and see what I'll do. Yeah. Well, I'm in Illinois, God. That's weird. Um, <laughs> and this was before I knew that my parents were going down there. And, um, and I just kept praying about it. And I thought at first it meant that I was going to be going to, uh, to, to move in. That my buddy, I had a buddy in New Braunfels, Texas that had been trying to get me to move down there ever since we went to the discipleship school together. And so I called him up and I was like, bro, I got a word from the Holy Spirit, man, coming down to Texas, bro. And, uh, and as I prayed about it, I didn't get peace about it. I was like, I was like, okay, well, you told me Texas, but it's not New Braunfels. So where else is it? And then, uh, had a conversation with my parents about the fact that there was an outside chance that dad was going to get this job in Houston. And, uh, go forward. I moved down to Houston and, um, and I didn't, I didn't have a plan. I knew that God was leading me there and I knew that he would be faithful. Um, I looked for a job for a couple different months. Um, and best thing I found was Starbucks. Thank you, Jesus. For Starbucks <laughs> so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, man, I have, I have been through, uh, some fire at Starbucks. I, t- I tell you what, you don't you don't know how ticked a lady can get in the morning than when if you made her double decaf latte, extra Splenda, wrong. It's it's she'll she'll you'll have to you'll have to get some Jesus in you to be able. Okay, ma'am, let me remake that for you. Um, and it was a real humbling time because I'm working around a bunch of younger kids, uh, you know, kids that are going to college, kids that are in high school and stuff. And here I am at 26, uh, you know, trying to figure out what I'm going to do, you know. And uh, five months happened, and I and I went to Texas with a little bit of debt. That part of the reason I wanted to get there was I wanted to I wanted to pay that off. And um, as I'm working there, it's. They're paying me minimum wage. I'm, I'm working my butt off. I'm working weird hours, having to stay up late, work early, and other different stuff. And, um, and, I, and I remember I, I was driving home one night, um, probably five months into it, and I just had this breakdown moment um, where I was like, God, did you take me to, te- did you leave me in the desert to die? You know, that, that children of Israel thing where God, I was better off in Illinois where I was at least comfortable. I had some security and I had some other things around me. And, um, and it was in that time that God has been able to re-identify not only who I am to go through these trials, but who he is in those trials with me. And, um, and so I, I, had, I, I had that yelling match with God in the car. I'm going, God, surely I am way overqualified to be scrubbing drains at, at Starbucks and to be serving grumpy ladies coffee in the morning and to be dealing with all of this stuff. And... Um, and so anyway, uh, there, there's a good ending to the story, but I want to pause and I want to read out of James 1. If you've got your Bibles, I've got my phone. Super cool technology stuff. All right, James 1, we're going to do verses 2. Maybe we'll just start on 2. So one of the, the things that God kind of challenged my heart in, in this time is how do we how do we approach trials when we go because we all go through trials it's not just because you sign up to be a Christian doesn't mean that all the problems go away that you're you're scotch free that you aren't going to deal with anything that that you aren't going to go through hardships so what what is what does the Bible say that we need to do so we're going to read it says dear brothers and sisters I'm reading James 1 verse 2 and I'm reading NLT uh, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it opportunity for great joy, for you know that the, that for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. Um, so God's James has always been a book that God just hits me square in the heart on. It's it's something that it's he he spells it out pretty clearly, right? It says. 
to uh, consider it an opportunity for great joy. I, I usually don't think of joy when, when something hits me. You know, when I'm, when I'm working a minimum wage job and I'm, I'm probably getting into more debt uh, as, I'm, as I'm working this thing and I'm going, God, no, man, this is, this is not the way we're supposed to be doing this thing, you know? This is, uh, this is wrong. And, and the enemy wants to sit there and he wants to pull your focus away from God. He wants to sit there and to disarm you from the truth that he is there with you, that he is in that moment, he is in that place with you, and that he's, in that he's given you the ability to walk through that. And we're not to just sit here and to just kind of, okay, I'm going to make it work, but I'm not going to like it. We're going to figure it out, and we're going to go, and we're going to, and we're going to just gut our way through this thing. But it says to approach it with joy, to take on. And, and how do we do that? How do I, how do I harness this this joy? Well, I take faith in God. I know who God is for me first. I know that He's a good Father, right? He is the He is the good good Father. The reason that you're here today is because of His faithfulness. That He is that He is the author and finisher of your faith. So I take hold of that, and I say, God, okay. I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take faith here. I'm going to take hope. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rest in, in your peace that looks beyond the circumstances of what the world says is going to happen or what the enemy wants to lie to you about, saying, oh, you, you messed up, man. You're, you're not going to get through this trial. Or, hey, man, uh, yeah, you did move to Texas, and that was really stupid. Remember that thing you did? And the enemy, I think we give the enemy sometimes less credit than he deserves for the things that we hear in our head. We, we put it as the voice of reason, the things that we hear, the things that, man, I need to just pick this thing up and I need to make it mine and I need to move forward and I need to figure out how to do this thing. And, 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 it, and I don't see anything in James that says, pick that shoulder, shoulder that burden and grunt it out, baby. Just go forward and, and do that thing. But it says to take joy, to find peace, to... To be able to to be able to to move forward because it says for you know that when your faith is tested endurance has a chance to grow so let it grow when your endurance is fully developed and you will be perfect complete and lacking nothing um ray encouraged me to listen to a guy called graham cook i don't know if you guys are familiar with graham cook at all but um there was a series that he was talking about identity and um he said you know what if we understood the process of trials and what those mean in our lives and hardships, we wouldn't sit here and, and bellyache about it, that we wouldn't sit here and get down about the fact that things come into our life to, to that we have to go up those mountains like we were singing about this morning. It was kind of cool because, yeah, God, Holy Spirit's cueing me up. And uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't sit there and look at the mountain and we wouldn't go, oh God, not again, not again, not this again. Come on, Jesus. It, we would see that he is with us in the trial and that there's promotion at the end of it, that there is a bigger thing at the end of it, that, that, there, that, uh, that our faith is going to be perfected and that we're going to find a new place of strength because the enemy is going to throw stuff at you and he's going to lie to you and he's going to tell you that this is the big one and that you can't make it through this time. And, and the funny thing is you throw that right back at his face when you sit there and you take faith and you say, you know what? God, I don't, I don't care what the circumstance is. I don't care what, what the problem is. I take hold on you. And, the, and you just, every time you move forward, it hits him harder, and he's going to get really tired of hitting you back. And, and so we take joy. Um, I'm going to read Psalms 84, 5 through 6. If you want to turn there with me. Everybody doing good? Awesome. Am I talking enough into the mic, Ray? Rodney, am I talking enough into the mic? Great. All right, Psalms 84, 3 through 6. Did I do that right? Hmm. I don't think I found the right one. Okay, never mind. We're going to move down to five. Verse five. What joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord, who have their, set their minds on the pilgrimage to Jerusalem. When they walk through the valley of weeping, it will become a place of refreshing springs. The autumn rains will clothe it with blessings. 
They will continue to grow stronger, and each one of them will appear before God in Jerusalem. Um, the thing about joy is it's not based in our ability to be able to get through it. Is that it is, it, like I keep saying, it, it's a hope that's built on God that puts him in the middle of our circumstance and pulls us closer to him, that gives us peace in the midst of a trial, um, peace in the middle of the storm for the, for the disciples, if you guys remember that. Um, part of the reason the enemy wants to lie to us and to get us focused in on other things and to drag our attention is because it tunes us out from the, the kingdom of heaven. It tunes us out from the, king, the things that God wants to speak into our hearts through this time, the, 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 that he wants to show himself faithful. My dad always told me that challenge God. God's not afraid of you. Um, I think sometimes we, we, get, we put our, knit, or our gloves on and we don't want to hurt God and we don't want to put that on him, but you know, he says he, he, he'll, he'll pick up that cross with us and he'll go and that we need to take that before him. And ultimately, we can challenge him on these things. We can sit there and we can come boldly before the throne of grace and we can bear our hearts to him. And then when we put our faith and hope in him, we can be in tune to the things of the kingdom of heaven that are going on around us that, that was all based in my strength. I can't hear, I can't see anything outside of me because I've got my blinders on. But God can bring those down so that we can be able to be in tune with what he's doing around us, through us, in the circumstance. And, and something that I've learned is you never know who's watching you through the midst of, of those circumstances, is that if, if we as a body of Christ know who we are and know who God is, that's going to speak bigger than anything else that I can say to anybody else around me at work, at, um, at church, or anything else. It's, 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 a, it's a place that God puts us to prove his faithfulness not only to us but to other people. Um, I love this scripture that we just read because it also talks about refreshing. That it's not just a it's not just a place that we have to bear this and we have to go through again. It's a, it's a place that God meets with us, that He refreshes us, that He brings newness. That the the only way that we move forward and we go up and we get closer to Him is when we go through these trials because. We're human and we've got junk and junk that we've got to work out. I, you, you want a list? I'll give you a list of my junk that, I, that God's working out in me. And one of them was, uh, was trusting in him. And, uh, and, and he just, he so longs to, to pour into your lives, to pour into your hearts, to, to be able to be that place of uh, refreshment. And, and another lie that the enemy brings in is that you need that he's going to try and isolate you away from these problems, that he's going to try and push you away, that, you know, especially if it's a sin thing that you're wrestling in and that you're holding on to, it's shame on you. Go to the corner. Don't, don't come out with, into the light with, with, with your stuff, you know, because you need to figure that out, and you need to figure, fix yourself before you bring that out into the, into the light. And God's like, I'm here. I want to pour into you. I want to... I want to bless you. I want to take that load off of you. And I want to further make, make new what you thought was lost. That I want to bring life into that. Um, so, um, you guys are familiar with this scripture. But one of the other points I wanted to make through when we go through these trials is we just got to trust him. Proverbs 3.5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Um, such a good place to be, man, when you, when you just let go. Um, you hear a lot of worship songs talk about, I'm letting go, I'm laying down. And sometimes Christianity is that easy. Sometimes we make it so complicated that we try and somehow work it to be better or something like that. And God's like, man, I invented the wheel, so I got this thing down. <laughs> so trust him. Um, kind of going along with um, what we do in trials is there's a great scripture, Psalms 37. Um, let's see, three through six, if you guys want to turn there real quick with me. So again, there's that word, trust. Trust in the Lord and do good, and you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn and your justice 
of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. There's a, the NIV version, um, and the first part says, trust in the Lord and dwell in the land. And um, there's something about people that know who God is for them, that, have, that take that joy, that stuff comes, stuff goes, but they, they're, they're not just passively going through, they're, they're dwelling in the land, they're taking hold of where God has placed them, that you are placed where you are for a reason, wherever your job is, whatever you're doing, whatever, um, whoever you're in contact with, that, that God has anointed and put you there for a reason. And so we're not supposed to just set up a pitch a tent and, you know, kind of kick, right, kick it around the campfire, that we're supposed to dwell in the land, that we're supposed to claim it, that we're supposed to say, God, one thing he taught me was to pray and to pray into my circumstance, to say, God, this is where you've put me. This is where you've placed me. I'm going to be faithful with what you've given me. I'm going to move forward and I'm going to change. And I believe that you are going to do things here in this land where we're at right now. Um, last thing that uh, God taught me going through trials was to listen to wisdom and listen to the love of the father that, um, that if we're not, engaging and we're um, if, if we're not actively putting him first that all this stuff that I'm talking about doesn't come around that we need to be at the feet of Jesus and, and listening to what he says about all this stuff because all the wisdom in the world uh, and all the great stuff that you can figure out your way doesn't mean a hill of beans as Ray likes to say um, if, you, if you aren't sitting there before the feet of Jesus and getting renewed and filled by him um Colossians 3.14 says, above all these things, put on love. And, and we pick that, that thing that God gives us, that love to be able to, that it, it, it takes away all the noise, all the other stuff that tries to, to bind, take you away from what he's, where he's got you. Um, wrapping up, um, the end of the story goes that I was still at Starbucks for three months. God didn't zap me out of my situation. I still cleaned drains. I still dealt with grumpy ladies at the, the, the drive through window. And, um, but he gave me a new sense of purpose that I knew that there was a place that I, there, that I was called there, if not to, uh, to humble me, to bring my pride low that said that I was better than my circumstances or better than the, the trial that I was going through. It was to minister and to be a light to the other people that I was working with. Um, and I worked there for uh, another three months and then something crazy happened I uh, I met the uh, the wonderful woman that I'm now engaged to um, long story short uh, the first day we met she got in a, in a serious car accident and uh, she was living in Arkansas at the time and she at the time and she uh, she ended up having to come home back to Texas to live with mom and dad because she wasn't able to take care of herself she was kind of uh, she was kind of in a bed for how long baby Four and a half months she was in a wheelchair, so that's a way to start a relationship. <laughs> it's great. I tell you, man, uh, you want to really know somebody, they go through them with an accident or something like that, and uh, you get to see the true caliber of who you're, who you're dealing with. And, um, and it was crazy. I'm, I, so I thought I was sending her off the day that she got in the car accident. I was like, okay, nice lady that I'll never see again. Love you. Not, I didn't say that. I said just goodbye. I, I say love you now. I didn't say it back then. I'm not, I'm not, I don't move that fast. Um, and, uh, and she came back two weeks later and, uh, God started growing our relationship together. And, uh, one of the things we had to do was to be able to get her house ready for, um, for her to be able to use this wheelchair in and out. And so I went over to her house and we had to build this ramp for her to be able to get around and, uh, got set up a, a cool moment where I was just sitting there working, nothing, just trying to be nice. And uh, and there's this guy that was helping her, her, her and her dad and I work on this thing. And he starts talking to me, and I'm sitting there talking about Starbucks. And he's like, "Well, what are you doing?" I'm like, "Well, I moved down here seven months ago, and I'm working at Starbucks and just trying to figure out whether I'm going to go back to school, sir, or whether I'm going to whether I'm going to uh, try and find a job. You know, waiting for God to open up something for me." He's like, "Huh, that's interesting." said, uh, how do you feel about chemical operating? And I said, 
I'll do it. I mean, I <laughs> uh, don't know much about it, sir, but, uh, you know, if you give me an interview, I can give it a shot. And uh, two weeks later, God blessed me with the amazing job that I have right now where um, I, I, I've been there for a year now, um, had benefits. That's a great thing. I love benefits. Um, I, and, and he's helping me to pay off the debt that I have. I'm, I'm, I haven't been debt-free in almost seven years, and I'm closing in on the mark uh, of being done with that. So that's, that's some God faithfulness right there in my life. Um, the fact that my relationship with Sam came about, that I was, it wasn't even something that I was looking for, but he blessed me with um, and is continually growing us closer together and um, just planting me in the church that I'm at, that I look back and I just am like, God, I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm so appreciative of the fact that you are the author and that you are the finisher of who I am. And uh, I'm not done yet. I'm not cooked yet. Not, not, well, he decides when that's done. But I'm just thankful. And, uh, and so know who, know who you are. Know what he is, he is placed inside of you and know who he is. And uh, you'll walk right on through that fire. So anyway, thank you. Good word. I remember uh, right before he got that job, I remember we were sitting at another coffee place. And uh, and Ben Ben is a doer. He doesn't like sit around. He just go, you know. And uh, he said, you know, everything in me wants to go do this or that. But he said, I feel like the Lord's just saying, just relax and let me do. And uh, that was a dramatic change in Ben. And it was shortly after that the Lord did some really cool stuff. Um, this morning, you know, when we, when we finish a, a service, we always want to give people an opportunity to accept Jesus, if you've never accepted the Lord as your Savior, to know the one that died for you, and to know what it's like to have your sins forgiven. Also, if you want people to have an opportunity to receive from the Lord, if there's a need going on in your life and you want prayer, if uh, going through some physical things or other stuff, we're going to have some ministry team folks who would love to pray for you for any of those things. Another thing that we need to do that I forgot, uh, <clears throat> we need to take an offering up for, um, for cross ties for, for Jana and Tony Geyer. Wonderful people. They do a, a weekend thing uh, for years for junior high, high school kids. They, they just... Uh, do all kinds of stuff. They get allowed us to use their facilities for retreats, for all kinds of things. But they're just wonderful people. And so we're going to do that. I'm going to pray, and we're just going to do that really quick. But um, um, before you leave, hug somebody. Uh, if you see somebody you don't know, introduce yourself. And uh, let's just have a wonderful time. Amen? So, Lord, we just thank you today for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for the word from Ben. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that it really is all about you. And, and you are the great prize. And joy comes from you. It doesn't come in accomplishing or doing or even getting. But it comes from you. And in the midst of the, those hard times, we draw closer than ever before. We thank you, Lord, for, for trials and tests. We say that, Lord. I know, Lord, sometimes we complain in the midst of it, but, Lord, you know how much we can handle. You know how much, God, you want to do in our lives. And we, Lord, we pray for this, this offering. Lord, we just ask that you would use it to multiply what's in the heart of Jan and Tony, Lord, to minister to this, this county, Lord, to bless so many different churches. God, they, they just go out of their way to help. And, Lord, we just thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll just do that. If you're writing a check, make it out to four C's and all the monies will go to Jan <clears throat> or go to not to them, but to cross ties. Would you all stand on your feet? If you need prayer, come. If it's time, to, are we going to sing a song? Let's sing a song and, and worship and then you can you can leave as you're worshiping even too. All right. Grab hands. Lord, bless our Bless that person's hand your whole. Lord, we ask you to bless them. Lord, this week we're asking God for, for divine encounters, Lord, with, 
with you and with others, Lord. And Lord, I pray for myself, Lord, to be able to touch more lives, more opportunities to pray for people, Lord, to minister your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. The grander earth has quit before Moved by the sound of his voice And seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken for my regard and Through it all, through it all, my Be it for me to not be 